Alrighty, guys. Welcome to this week's weekly outlook. Thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, I want to just start off by giving you guys a healthy disclaimer, as always, that throughout this webinar, guys, this should be used for educational entertainment purposes only. Uh, this is just my views, my bias of the markets. Please don't be taking trades just based off of my bias. Please use you know this as a handicap in addition to your own analysis to be doing your own trading. Uh, but this is my weekly outlook for the week of, I believe, February uh, 18th through the 23rd. Let's go ahead and jump into things, guys. First thing I want to go over is the economic calendar uh, moving throughout this week. Not a whole lot to talk about. Uh, I wouldn't even really say that there's any super key risk events to really focus on. Just know that there's some high impact in, uh, news spread throughout the week. Um, potentially Thursday could be a key risk event uh, when we have the FOMC meeting minutes that is going to be released for the U.S. dollar. Um, other than that, we have some other high impact news. We have some GDP for the pound. We have some retail sales for the Canadian dollar. We have some European Central Bank news. Uh, lots of lots of just uh, high impact news spread throughout a bunch of different currency pairs throughout this week. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the technical analysis for the week. Um, I want to just quickly go over what we saw last week. Let's look at the dollar index first. Now, last week on the dollar index, we saw some pretty significant weakening of the dollar. You guys can see that outlined right here on last week's weekly candle. However, something important to keep in mind is what happened on Friday. So let's go ahead and outline what happened uh, throughout last week. So here's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then this is Thursday's candle that closes on Friday. So the last candle of the week, all last week was bearish. We can see except for the last day of the week. We saw a very nice bearish engulfing candle, um, pretty significant rejection around this demand level on the dollar index. So it's still showing that there is buying pressure in the markets, that the sellers are not totally in control. Uh, my opinion, my bias for this week, it's, it's been a very slow start to the week also, but I believe that we're going to see some mild dollar strength. I think that we could see price come back up and retest this 90 level, and then we'll reevaluate price action in this area. Um, if we end up breaking through this level and we see some strength on the dollar, then that's going to be you know a classic W formation, and we may look for a breakout to the upside. However, if we continue to see another uh, rejection, like we saw previous resistance around this area when price gets up here, then we may look at shorting the dollar again. But that's my short-term bias on the dollar is I think we're going to potentially see a little bit more strength going into um, this week just based off of the way the markets reacted at the end of last week at such a significant level for the dollar index. This was a very significant demand support level for the dollar index. And we saw that rejection in that area. So I think buyers are going to retest uh, right around like the 90 area again. So look for some, in my opinion, I would say, you know, or me personally, I'm looking for some very mild um, dollar strength. Um, I also want to welcome, I saw that there's a bunch of new people in the chat watching this right now and a bunch of new people uh, in the participants. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat and I'll make sure I get to those before the end of this webinar, if you have any. Um, let's go ahead and look at gold. Gold, very similar to the opposite of the dollar index. Okay, So last week we saw a pretty significant rally. These were the first four daily candles, all these blue candles of last week. And then Friday, Friday's candle, we saw a pretty significant rejection around this previous supply area, previous resistance, and a nice bearish engulfing candle. So I think that because the 1350 area is proving to be some significant resistance and we're also seeing some support on the dollar index, then that we're most likely going to see a little bit of downside to at least start the week off on gold. So um, you know, me personally, going to be looking for a little bit of dollar strength, some gold weakness. So if we're looking for dollar strength, 
and we're looking for gold weakness, and that's my opinion, that I am interested in looking for euro USD weakness as well. So very similar to gold, I went over the correlations last week, guys. I went over the correlations between all of these pairs. Um, actually, that may have been in the premium webinar for you member for the premium members. But I, I know I've gone over these correlations before for most of you guys. Most of you guys probably all already know these correlations, but you guys know that the dollar index has a negative correlation to Euro USD and gold and Euro USD have a very strong positive correlation to each other. So if it wouldn't make sense if we were looking for a sell on gold and a buy on the dollar and a buy on Euro USD as well. If we're looking at buying the dollar index or then we have to be looking at selling Euro USD, okay? So Euro USD, just to outline what happened last week, very similar setup, right? We saw a very strong most of last week, all right? And then Friday, we saw a very significant bearish engulfing candle. Also, just like the exact opposite of the dollar index, finding some significant resistance at a supply area, just like we saw some very significant support on the dollar index at a demand area. So moving into this week, I think that we're gonna see a little bit of downside on Euro USD. Um, we do have a level to get through though. We can obviously see right around this 123.80 level has proven to be a significant zone for this pair. So we need to break through this area, but as long as we break through that area, I think we're probably going to come back and retest the 122.96 area. So look for a potential break of this zone and then a breakout to the downside. Um, and this is all providing that we see dollar strength. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to USD Swiss franc. Uh, very similar. Now, USD Swiss franc, not as strong a uh, negative correlation as uh, we've seen recently. You guys know normally Euro USD and USD Swiss franc have a very strong negative correlation to each other. Now, but it is moving very similarly. We saw some strength early on last week on USD Swiss franc, or most of last week, and then Friday. We saw some buying pressure in the dollar. Um, now, I'm going to remain with my analysis, guys. It wouldn't make sense if I'm looking at selling Euro USD and also selling USD Swiss franc most of the time. So, I'm going to remain with my bias of I am looking to sell Euro USD and buy USD Swiss franc. But more so, I'd be on the sidelines with USD Swiss franc. We've we've noticed if you guys have been following the webinars recently, you guys will know that um, I've been talking about the recent correlation between Euro USD and USD Swiss franc, how generally they have a very strong negative correlation, but the past couple of weeks, we've actually seen them have a slightly positive correlation just for a couple days here and there. So that being said, I'd be more interested in just focusing on Euro USD. Uh, both pound pairs, not super interested in trading. However, I do think on pound dollar that if we continue to see downside on Euro USD as we you know, have gone into um, the end of last week and early this week that I think we'll also see some downside on pound dollar. Okay. So, uh, yeah, keep it as simple as that guys looking at strength on dollar index downside Euro USD. As long as those trade ideas follow through, we're more than likely going to see pound dollar follow through the downside as well. Pound yen. Um, I'm not even really interested in trading right now, guys. Uh, past couple weeks have been pretty volatile for this pair, so I'm actually just going to completely skip over pound yen. Uh, dollar yen. Dollar yen is something that we've been watching and we've been looking at. You guys know if you watched last week's webinar, last week we were still sitting above this demand area. Okay, so we had this very significant support. Okay, multi month support on. Uh, dollar yen and because we saw some such significant weakening of the dollar last week we saw this pair actually break the support level and find a pretty strong dip to the downside now we didn't have as strong of a pullback on this pair as we did on your let's say your usd or gold or the dollar index last week we can see last week's pullback on friday was very minor However, I do think that this week dollar yen is probably going to find itself finding some strength retesting this area that it broke out. At that point, we may be looking at some more weakness. 
Um, but I'll just want to reevaluate price action once it gets back to this level. So currently we're trading at around the 106.75 area. And I think that we could see price move between the 108 and 107.50. So I think a good, you know, 75 to 150 pips ish, uh, this pair could move to the upside this week, but, um, that's, that's just my personal bias guys. We could see some continued weakening in the dollar, which would push this down in Euro USD up. We could be wrong, but just by the way, really, really. And you guys have to understand, and I think I've said this many times before that pretty much the dollar index gives me the clarity, um, and the clues of what is going to happen in the rest of the market. Okay. I can pretty much, I mean, I can see what the dollar index is doing and I can, and I can already know essentially what the rest of the market is doing just by looking at what the dollar index is doing, or maybe not the entire market as a whole, but at least the, the, the individual pairs that I personally trade. Okay. So, um, something to keep in mind guys, that that is just my opinion that I think we're going to see dollar strength, but potentially upside on this pair. Um, we obviously saw a very significant level broken last week, this support level, and uh, it needs to be retested before we go lower. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and look at AUD USD and NZD USD and then finish it up with USD CAD. Um, we have a question in the chat very quickly. It says, hi, Dave, do you normally trade on the daily time frame and hold on to trades for a couple of days or weeks or so? Um, so that's a good question. Uh, so uh, my average trade length really differs from trade to trade. I'd say most trades, uh, just as a generality, probably last um, anywhere from maybe like four to 10 hours. Now, on this weekly outlook, I pretty much just focus on the weekly time frame and the daily time frame. You, you really won't see me too often going on to lower time frames. Occasionally, I will here and there, um, but that's because we're, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm giving my weekly analysis, what I think is going to happen throughout this week. Now, as far as my actual intraday trades generally will be based on the four hour. It'll be analysis that is supported by the weekly, daily, or four hour, but Generally, like the stop loss, take profit, entry, that type of thing is going to be determined by um, the one hour time frame. Sometimes a 30 minute, but generally the one hour time frame or the four hour time frame, either the one hour, four hour, and then that analysis is generally supported by the overall bias on the daily and weekly time frame. Um, so let's go ahead and look at AUD USD and NZD USD. Now, these are two very um, important pairs to be watching right now, uh, just because of the patterns in the markets that are being created. So if you guys look on the daily time frame and you notice these two trend lines, we've talked about this a few times if you guys have been following the webinars, but for those new faces that are in here, um, previously, let me, let me actually scale out just a little bit so you guys can see what is going on with AUD USD, okay? So the past couple of years, AUD USD has actually been in a period of consolidation pretty much since early 2016, which is around this area. And all throughout 2016 and most of 2017, we saw some pretty significant consolidation on AUD USD. Now, towards quarter three of 2017, we saw a breakout of this area. And then we actually saw price come back into the zone retest. And then early 2018 or late 2017 going into 2018, we've seen a rally in AUD USD. And then we've found a, a, a significant supply level where we recently found some resistance off of. So an important level that I would have recommend you guys have on your charts is basically it is this upper green box that I have in you know, it's disputable exactly where the level is, but it, it, because it's a zone, it's not just one straight line that goes across, but I'd say the middle of that zone is going to be right around what you guys see to the right price, to the right 0 0.8055. So if you, have, if you have your trading journals, maybe write that down so you can go and um, plot this on your chart afterwards, but um, really doesn't matter what type of trading you're doing. I think just all across the board, the 0 0.8055 zone is a pretty significant area because we saw some previous support um, a couple of years ago when we saw a pretty significant downside on this pair. 
And then we saw some resistance after that support was broken. And then of course, just recently at the end of last year and um, just a, just a couple weeks ago um, with some resistance in this area. So the, you can see how significant the 0 0.8055 zone is. Um, but we, well, I'm not really too worried about that right now. What I'm more focused on is the actual structure that we have. So just so you guys can see on the weekly and then I'm going to scale it down to the daily. Um, the, the previous breakout of, so here is that consolidation from 2016 and a good majority of 2017. And then here's that breakout. Okay. So here's what we're, we're what we're, I'm watching is that breakout that we saw on AUD USD. Okay. Now we were, we weren't necessarily in a channel, but we weren't, we did see some pretty significant upside in this pair. And then once we saw that move to the upside, once we stopped creating higher highs and higher lows and started creating lower highs and lower lows, we saw a very significant, once we saw that reversal, we saw some very significant downside in this pair. Okay. And this is, this is natural. We generally see the markets move in waves and we saw a very strong correction from to that upside on AUD USD. And then very similar um, to the upside, once we saw that downtrend or that downside move and we stopped creating lower lows and lower highs and started creating higher lows and higher highs, we saw another strong push to the upside. So both of these two strong pushes to the upside is what I want you guys to keep your eyes on right now. And I want you guys to look at what is happening right now. So Last time we saw that major uptrend broken, and then we, we last time we saw that major uptrend broken, we saw some serious downside. And we just were in a major uptrend, a second major uptrend, and we recently saw it broken just about two weeks ago, or about two and a half weeks ago. And now we have seen some downside, right? We saw some initial significant downside, but not nearly as strong as that first push to the downside. And that is why. Me personally, I think that this move to the downside is not completed yet, okay? Although we did have a very strong week for this pair, right? Because the dollar was very weak last, last week. Um, I think that we're at least going to come and retest this zone, which is that the resistance of that consolidation from 2000, all of 2016 and most of 2017, where we broke out of right here. So this is the resistance of that area. So watch this pair, right? We know that the market creates patterns. We know that the market generally has a tendency to repeat itself. So we have a pretty good um, idea of where the markets are going. And in my opinion, that's, that's probably lower. Okay. Now, now that I broke that down on AUD USD for you guys, NZD USD is very similar as well. Um, I'm going to just remove a couple things. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Just remove the fibs for now. So very, very similar thing, a little bit different chart than AUD USD, of course, but very similar um, setup. So this is the previous uptrend when AUD USD was in that, that first uptrend that we saw and ZDUSD was in this first uptrend. And then when that downtrend broke, which is when also when that downtrend broke on AUD USD, we saw some very significant downside, All right? So both these pairs, if you guys obviously cannot tell, they generally have a very similar correlation. You can even see in their price, right? Both of them are um, the Australian dollar versus the US dollar and the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. Their exchange rate isn't too different. You'll usually say that they, you'll usually see that they stay um, right around each other. Um, if you guys are not familiar with the ge geographical location of Australia and New Zealand, New Zealand is two islands right off of the um, east side of Australia. And uh, of course, because they are an island in, in Australia is the closest country to them. They, their economy very heavily relies on Australia. So that is why you see an exchange rate very close to each other. Um, you see economies that are very similar to each other, monetary policy that is very similar to, to each other. So um, uh, that is a good explanation of why 
um, you know, they move, they tend to have a very strong correlation to each other, but anyways, getting off the correlation and back onto the chart pattern. Um, again, you know, we had that uptrend and the major downside Pr recently, we saw that major uptrend. And if you guys have been following my trade ideas, I also posted this inside telegram. Okay. Just to kind of scale in just a little bit more to what has recently happened. So we saw a very strong channel to the upside which I'm actually going to delete this orange channel just for now. So we saw that major channel to the upside and then we broke it. And if you guys were in um, inside of Telegram, I don't know if this is going to load for some reason. Recently, this hasn't want to load, but um, it is on there. I'll just kind of, I know you guys cannot see the chart. It just is probably showing you a white screen with a little spinny loady bar. Um, it says right here, uh, is that a major supply zone, which is resistance and finding selling pressure. Um, if the mild at large bearish engulfing daily candle, if the mild USD strength continues, expected this pair to continue dropping. Um, and that was actually right around this area down here. So we did see a little bit of strength momentarily, but overall, uh, this, this blue arrow was a part of the um, trade setup that I posted and we did see pretty much literally exactly to the bottom of that blue arrow price move. So you can even go see for yourself. This blue arrow has not changed. It's literally just been there. Maybe it's going to load. I have a feeling it might load. Just want to show some of you guys that are new. So you guys can see that I do have history of, you know, being fairly accurate in the markets. Okay. I, it doesn't want to load. Not going to spend too much time on that. All right, guys. So, uh, last thing, just, just to cover the tech, my technical outlook on New Zealand dollar, us dollar, we are once again at a very significant supply zone for this pair, very significant resistance. Okay. That is one of the reasons we took a sell around this area, not just because that trend was broken, but also because of the supply area. Now it should be interesting to see where price moves this week. However, you guys should understand the correlations by now that if we're, if I'm expecting a little bit of dollar strength, if I'm expecting a little bit of downside on Euro USD, if I'm expecting some more downside on AUD USD, then I should also be expecting some downside on this pair as well. So that is what I'm going to be expecting. Um, I'd like to see New Zealand dollar, US dollar um, follow back, follow price back through at least down to the 7260 area. Um, I think there's some some room to the downside, but we may see a larger pullback to the downside. This was originally our long-term target. I believe this was actually just the 50% retracement level. If I'm, if I remember that correctly, I'll just double check. Yeah. Okay. So that's actually, that's the 50% retracement level of this previous move to the upside. So just a intermediary, um, target doesn't necessarily mean price is going to stop there, but I think there is a good chance that price will reach there. Um, Obviously, last week we saw some upside on this pair with that significant dollar weakness that we saw. But of course, if we see some dollar strength, um, we're probably going to see this pair move lower. Okay. So um, let's finish it off, guys, with USD CAD. And then I'll very quickly, I, you know, I'm not no crypto guru, guys. You guys know that I'm very transparent with that. But we do have a crypto side of positive traders. I just want to very quickly um, talk about. Uh, just Bitcoin in specifics um, at the end of this very quickly. And, um, you know, maybe my my opinion, you know, kind of look at the market, see what is happening, and then we'll, we'll finish off the week, weekly outlook. Uh, so USD CAD, guys, uh, USD CAD, uh, just to outline what happened last week. Oh, what is that? I don't know what some of these lines are. Oh, some of you guys are annotating on here. Let me just turn that off. All righty. So uh, last week we saw, you know, I'm, I'm, I probably sound like a broken record at this point because we've saw, we see, we've seen the same thing on all of these pairs. We saw some very strong weakness in the U S dollar, which created some downside on USD CAD. And then of course, Friday's candle, we saw some strength in the dollar. So we saw this very strong bullish candle on USD CAD. Um, you know, that, again, tells me that I think the, there is some buyers still in this market. I think there's some dollar buyers, which is probably going to push this pair higher. Um, I think the next level of resistance, we're probably going to find USD CAD come back and retest this zone. Um, a couple weeks ago, we did actually see this area retested. But if you remember, if you look at this candle on, this was literally, I'm just going to put this on the 15 minute. It was just one 
quick little 15 minute candle right here. So scaled out a little bit. You can see over here to the left, this candle right here. It really wasn't any structure or real price action that we saw in that area. It's just a 15 minute that came up and like kind of kissed that area. And then we ended up seeing some downside with that dollar weakness. But going back to the daily, we probably will see price come back up to that area. So again, we're trading right now around the 125.80 area. I would like to see probably this week, we'll probably see USD CAD touch the 126.70 area. So about 100 pips higher. So lots of good moves in the markets. I think this week, um, I would like to see um, a little bit more movement this week, but overall, you know, I'm looking for some dollar strength. So um, I just want to very quickly look at the um, the Bitcoin market very quickly. Not going to spend more than a couple minutes on this, and then we'll finish this up. Those of you guys that are not interested in uh, crypto, appreciate you guys' this time. I'll see you guys in next week's outlook. But for the, those of you guys that do want to see crypto, let me just look at it very quickly. So, um, guys, I you guys know me personally. I have my portfolio diversified a little bit. Um, you guys know I called out on Tron when it was at three cents before it pumped up to 30 cents right now. I think Tron is somewhere around the five cent area. Um, so I have a very, very small short track record of having some success in the crypto markets. But this is just my opinion in, on crypto guys is that um, there are over 1500 different coins out there right now. Now, I don't necessarily think all 1,500 of them are going to last. Um, I think, in fact, this year, we're probably going to see a majority of those probably like die off and hit zero, and we aren't going to see, you know, we, we, we aren't going to see as many coins in the markets. But I do think that the main, some of the, some of the coins that are in the top 10, um, specifically Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, Probably Ripple. I'm not the biggest fan of Ripple because it's it's owned by banks and it's very centralized for a decentralized market. But um, I still think Ripple is probably going to go up long term. I think th those three, among others, um, are probably going to go up. I personally hold quite a few Ethereum um, in in the five figure range of or in the five number range, more than ten Ethereum, and I think that we're going to see some very large gains over the coming years. Um, obviously price projection is very hard. I, he, I get asked a lot, you know, where do I think Bitcoin is going to go this year? Where do I think Ethereum is going to go this year? I don't know necessarily exactly this year what is going to happen um, because I'm no you know, professional analyst with the Bitcoin markets. I just understand blockchain and that type of thing. But, but I understand the case use behind this technology. And also recently, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but the SEC, uh, that's the Securities and Exchange Commissions in the United States, they basically regulate everything exchange and finance related um, in the United States. They held a meeting on cryptocurrency and had a generally very positive outlook for cryptocurrency. You know, a lot of the speakers were pretty positive on uh, cryptocurrency. Now, they were fairly negative on ICOs, which I can understand. That's that should kind of be treated like a security and ICOs is kind of like gambling a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, them specifically talking about things like Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, the main actual coins that are being used right now, uh, they're very positive on it. And so I'll just lay it out flat for you guys that I would say, if you can, you know, diversify a little bit, right? You know, buy a few hundred bucks of Bitcoin, buy a few hundred bucks of Ethereum and just put it in a wallet, cold storage and forget about it, right? Um, you know, don't look at it for a couple years. I think Bitcoin long term, I don't know when exactly, but I do think we're probably going to see a 50 to 100K um, or more Bitcoin at some point, um, USD. And I think Ethereum is probably, we're probably going to see, you know, a 3 to 10K or higher Ethereum long term. Um, you know, these coins are, I, I truly believe that cryptocurrency is going to change the world. I think 10 years from now, um, the same way people thought the internet was a bubble, you know, now every single person, little kids, you know, kids that, you know, don't know anything, know what the internet is. And I think that's the way cryptocurrency is going to be in the future. Just my opinion. You know, I think, you know, even kids that don't know anything are going to know what crypto is because it's so, it's so prominent, right? So um, as the mass adoption, as 
crypto becomes more massively adopted, I think we're going to see, you know, some, some very, uh, some more strength in this. Um, this year, I do think that we'll see the all time highs on Bitcoin retested. I don't know if it's going to happen, you know, next month or November, but I do think we'll probably see the all time highs on all, all the main cryptocurrencies probably retested at some point this year. So, um, you know, it, it's not something that I recommend day trading guys, you know, um, it's something that I recommend, you know, getting into. Um, I think these coins are long-term seriously undervalued. And that's the whole idea behind crypto, in my opinion, is, is buying coins that are undervalued. You know, not just because they're quote-unquote cheap, but because they're undervalued. And, uh, you know, just looking at what Bitcoin is doing and, uh, you know, the fact that there can only be 21 million Bitcoin. Granted, we won't see the 21 millionth Bitcoin mined until I think sometime in the year. 2100 um you know there's obviously a supply and demand for this type of thing so i think you know a lot of these top 10 coins are are se severely undervalued long term so that's just my opinion we've obviously seen the past couple of weeks also pretty bullish on bitcoin which is nice after seeing bitcoin drop to um under 6000 usd we're back to 11 and a half uh, to just today actually we're seeing some recent highs broken so that's just my opinion guys you know no no real technical analysis just want to give you guys my general idea and, and my views on bitcoin so i know some of you guys ask me questions you know what are these things over here bitcoin ethereum and tron um I personally still hold Tron guys. I know that there's a lot of negativity on Tron or whatever. And there's also a lot of positivity on Tron, but um, I did uh, had, hold a webinar with our premium group back on December 28th, back when Tron was at three cents um, and that moved up to 30 cents. Now it's, we're still in profits, right? It's still five cents, but uh, yeah. All right. So uh, that's it guys. Uh, very interesting week to see in the Forex markets. Let's keep an eye on what the dollar does. Um, but, uh, you know, just again, my general opinion is some short term strength on the dollar index. Um, I don't really have anything else to go over today, guys. Uh, there's no questions in the chat either. So if you guys are no other questions. So if you guys do have any questions after this, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can reach out to me on Facebook, leave a message on this YouTube, uh, YouTube recording, Telegram, Slack if you're a premium member. Instagram if you follow me on there um, but go ahead also guys and follow our Facebook page um, definitely recommend to do that that's where I keep people very updated as well as telegram um, but that is this week guys so stay safe keep that risk management to a T guys uh, keep the risk to reward on the trades that you guys enter um, on point and um, I'll catch you guys on next Sunday for next Sunday's uh, or next Sunday's weekly outlook appreciate you guys this time guys have a great week take care guys